Good day, everybody, and welcome to this third installment of Ask the Pastor. Uh, I'm going to switch today's question, and uh, because the original question was going to be, why do we shake hands before taking communion? Uh, I'll add that for another video at another time, but one has come, a different question has come up, which takes a little bit uh, more of a, I'll say, political turn, but I think it's worth a conversation uh, for a video like this. And that's the question, should churches be taxed? And I said, this might get a little political, uh, so if you don't want any of that, don't uh, look at it, but uh, it's come up in various uh, times around the last uh, year or so, especially as you hear more scandals happen within the church. Um, one of the kind of cries is tax the churches. And so let's really explore what might happen if churches got taxed. And uh, I'll begin with the mis uh, misinformation that kind of spreads out there. The first is that pastors don't pay taxes. Um, I'll start with what I know. I'm a pastor. Hi. Uh, and I certainly do pay taxes. Most pastors are mainline pastors. Uh, would pay taxes. We're considered self-employed by the government, so we pay a self-employment tax. We pay our own Social Security. We pay our own everything. And so every quarter, I pay a quarterly uh, installment of my taxes and Social Security. And every year, I get a giant tax bill. It's pretty big, I'll tell you the truth. But um, so the first misnomer is that pastors don't pay taxes. Well, I will also add that we do hear scandals of, let's just say, popular clergy out there who have giant mega churches who say they don't take a salary and therefore don't pay taxes, but uh, are doing that via kind of loopholes within the tax system where uh, book sales uh, are, are, are taxed or not taxed. I don't know any of these things. I'm not a giant mega pastor who makes a ton of money, but often hide their funds in continuing education funds or discretionary funds. And so they say that they don't have uh, any salary yet have multi-million dollar mansions and things like that. That is not your average pastor. Your average pastor pays taxes uh, and is considered self-employed. If you ever, well, I was going to say, if you ever want to see my, my uh, tax receipts, I will not show them to you, but I, trust me on this that I do, that I do pay them. So um, that's kind of, the, as I said, the first misnomer, but does it happen? Absolutely. We hear about this regularly from kind of the multimillionaire congregations and pastors that are out there of ways that are going through the tax loopholes. So now back to the main question, should churches be taxed or what would happen, I should say, if churches got taxed? Well, most churches do not pay property tax. In fact, all churches do not pay property tax and usually sit on giant uh, parcels of land. Uh, part of the reason is they often give back to communities that are there uh, and you could argue yes or no whether that's true. That's up to your own uh, political and uh, th uh, religious stance. But let's just say a church got taxed. Well, if churches got taxed, property taxes, say next year, it would probably close a vast majority of churches. And I'm not even just talking about Christian churches. I'm talking about synagogues. I'm talking about mocks. I'm talking about temples. I'm talking about the whole span. It would close a vast majority of them because of the amount of land that they sit on. And right now, most not-for-profits, which churches fall under, uh, are hairline um, when it comes to how they are operating. Not-for-profits have been losing funds by about 10% per year, donations I should say, uh, by about 10% per year, and so many churches would fall on the cusp of barely being able to survive. And so, or barely able to survive right now, and so an extra tax would eliminate most of the churches. Uh, which would mean you'd have all of a sudden a whole bunch of pastors out of work. And since churches do not pay into uh, the unemployment system, 
uh, pastors would not only be out of work, but couldn't collect unemployment. And so uh, there'd be a whole bunch of houselessness too, and all of that sort of fun stuff. I would probably move into my parents' basement uh, if, if this happened because I live in a parsonage and so I don't own a home or anything like that. So you would have this wave of people that are all of a sudden unemployed as well as the staff that work at the various congregations. Um, the other thing that probably happened is one that people generally do not consider. How much churches add to the society. I know I'm speaking from the point of view as a pastor, but to give you an idea of uh, a lot of federal government uh, spending has cut off uh, things that help those that are impoverished, things that help single women, things that help um, those that don't have homes. And so like a lot of homeless shelters are run by churches, a lot of food shelves are run by churches, a lot of um, uh, offerings and givings that go to those that, are, that, are, that need funds come from churches. And so all of that would disappear. Like our church at Our Savior, we host AA, NA, uh, Al-Anon, and uh, various other support groups. So that, that place of support would all of a sudden disappear uh, because the church would have to close and so these options would not be there. Uh, I've served in other congregations where we gave out backpacks and food and all of these things. All of that would disappear. So you'd also have a giant loss of places that support those that are houseless, those that are impoverished, women who are who are abused. Uh, you'd have you'd have loss of support around there. Uh, example, uh, one of the other groups that we support are seafarers, and so uh, you know that support system would just be gone. Uh, as I said, you'd probably wipe out a ton of churches and therefore a ton of support systems for those groups. And so, when you talk about taxing the churches, again, you're you're not really uh, talking about. Uh, or I should say, you're talking about adding property tax to what's already there. But oftentimes the thought of how does a church contribute to a community isn't there. And so once you lost all of these kind of smaller churches, our savior would definitely be among those that would be gone. But uh, you know, how many worship under 100, for example, how many worship under 500, pretty much all of them would be gone. So you'd be left with these mega churches, the very churches that you would, that I'm guessing those that say tax the church want to uh, go towards. And so they would probably turn into corporations rather than not for profits and then start to get into the corporate loopholes. Again, this is all speculation, so hold it with a grain of salt, but the giant churches would be the ones that would survive uh, because they're working on multi-million dollar um, budgets and they're working on multi-million dollar income and all of that. And so they would probably start to find tax loopholes uh, much like your Amazons, much like your other giant corporations, and figure out ways to avoid taxes. Going back to the pastors who are multimillionaires that do not pay as uh, taxes as well. Similar thing, they would start to find loopholes. So really what you would uh, wipe out if you tax churches are the community churches that actually help uh, communities in times of need in, in within their smaller communities, you, you'd wipe all of them out, but you would keep the giant churches that are kind of not self-focused. I mean, I'm sure lots of giant churches help communities, don't get me wrong there, but the ones that are often the most criticized are the ones that would survive uh, taxation of churches. The other thing is they think, uh, the, the thought is that uh, revenue would continue to come into the government. But as I said, if you wipe out all churches within one uh, moment, you would only have one giant bump of revenue into the IRS, but then those church entities would not exist anymore. They would all be closed and uh, communities would be left with uh, tons of land to figure out what to do with as there was defaulting and as there was um, uh, if there were loans at, or if the church was paid off, they would just kind of be there and have to figure out who owns it and ways to buy it and all those sort of things that would happen. 
I mean, uh, if, if a church defaults on its taxes, who exactly do you come after? Do you come after the pastors? Do you come after the council? Who Who is in charge there? Um, again, uh, probably somebody saying, I know this is how not-for-profit law works. I, I don't. So uh, um, I'll leave that up to the experts who would know such a thing. But uh, going back to the to the main thing is you really, the community would lose groups that support the community. We're not talking major cities, we're talking about small, smaller towns. And so uh, that's what more than likely would happen if churches got taxed. You'd lose a whole bunch of community churches. A whole bunch of people would be unemployed all of a sudden. And support groups that went for the houseless, single parents, uh, community members who needed food uh, would all disappear. Oh, preschools as well. A ton of churches run preschools. Uh, and so all of those things would, would just disappear. And so a community would be left with wondering how to support these groups all of a sudden that weren't there. Maybe you have different ideas. Maybe you have different thoughts. Again, this was more off the cuff uh, than I normally do. I didn't write any notes this time, so that's why my brain was a little scattered. But if you have other thoughts, you can either write them in the comments below or uh, or send me an email if you know me, and we can chat about that. But uh, I, I'm taking a stab at it again, all speculation, because I don't really know what it would do. I can only go by what is present in my reality and what kind of I know about uh, the different congregations around. But generally, that's what would happen, is communities would lose a big support system uh, that help those that are in need. Next week's question will be, uh, what do the different, uh, what's the difference in, in the Lutheran denominations? Uh, you remember the first video I said uh, that, that the ELCA is probably the more liberal of the denominations theologically, and so I'll explain what does that mean. If you have a comment, or, or I should say, if you have a question of your own, please write that in the comment section below. Make sure it's a little bit meaty, you know, not a single answer so that I can talk about that on this video. Otherwise, we'll be winding up next week. Actually, I'll be winding up next week anyway to take a pause because I'm going to our National Assembly. Uh, but uh, if you have a question that's been on your mind, I hope you'll ask it. Take care, everybody.